Narcissistic people are exceptionally good at saying the right things so that you question your perception and not their behaviour. Narcissistic people know exactly how to gaslight your reality so that they can appear to actually care about you, to want what's best for you. So if you then, to the narcissist, go against their advice, you feel like you're the one in the wrong. Any narcissistic person will tell you you're in the wrong. And as we're all capable of making mistakes, a narcissist will delight in pointing out any mistake that you make and stand there with that, I told you so, because they don't want to see you doing well. They don't want to see you succeeding. They're incredibly envious of you. They want to bring you crashing down. So a few things that narcissistic people say to try and normalise their behaviour. Now we're human, so we can have our fears, we can have our concerns, we can have our worries, we can have heightened concerns. There's plenty of parents that like to know where their children are and worry about what their children are doing and what they are up to. And part of being a parent is giving the children the understanding in the hope that the children will make the right choices and along the way the children are going to make mistakes just like we did as children and just like we do as adults and we can often justify and say well it's not the children I don't trust it's other people I don't trust which is when we have to raise our children for the environment that they're in to give them the knowledge and the awareness to be able to protect themselves. Now, when children go out, it's very normal for parents to say, hey, just drop me a text when you get there. Just let me know when you've arrived. When it comes to narcissistic people, they will take this to the extreme. It's not because they're concerned about their child's welfare. It's because they're concerned about their child's growing independence and they don't like it. Same with a narcissistic partner. They might all be all for your friends and your hobbies in the beginning of the relationship when they're trying to sell you an illusion of who they are as a person. However, they fear abandonment. So they don't want you having friends. They don't want you having hobbies. So they're going to start keeping a tabs on you. They do this in subtle ways, which seem nice and seem genuine because nice and genuine people can do these things. They'll drop you off. They'll pick you up. They'll message you to see whether you're okay. And it's when it just feels off, it just feels too much. Your instincts are telling you that something isn't quite right. Narcissistic people usually want to know where you are and what you're doing at all times. And then if you just say, hey, this is getting a little bit too much, they'll be like, it's it's only because I care about you. And they're playing the victim and then you feel bad. Oh, it's only because they care. They're only messaging because they care. And because people do message because they care, you can't always recognise when it's a narcissistic person doing it, when they're saying, oh, it's only because I want to protect you. With a narcissist, they've got those coercive controlling behaviours where they're keeping your tabs on you, where you no longer feel able to do the things that you enjoy, where you fear making plans without them due to the reaction you might get from them. Even if you just fear going to speak to them, speak to them and say, hey, I was just thinking of doing this and you get that negative reaction from them. So narcissistic people are very good at saying things to normalise their behaviour because they can be similar to behaviours of those who do care about you. However, with a narcissist, it's a little bit more obsessive. Because narcissistic people tend to fear abandonment, because they don't want people informing you of who they are as a person, They will isolate you from people. They will cut you off from friends and family. Now they can say things such as, I don't trust that friend of yours, your family interfere too much. 
they can keep you that busy that you don't have time to see your friends and family or they can just play sweet and innocent of oh I'd just like to get to know you better I just want to spend more time with you a narcissistic partner in the early days is going to use I just want to get to know you better a narcissistic parent who's envious of their child's growing independence is going to get offended at their child growing up and going out and meeting friends because the parent is no longer the center of attention so then the parent's going to try and guilt trip the child and claim that they just want to spend more time with them when as a parent as an adult you have to learn as difficult as it is to let your child go, to let them grow up. There's no wrong way or right way. It's finding that personal balance that's right for the child and for you. With a narcissist, the child should be serving them. The child shouldn't have friends or other people. The narcissist should be the pivotal person in that child's life and the only one the child ever goes to. When it comes to making everyday decisions, whether you're dealing with a narcissistic partner, a narcissistic friend or a narcissistic parent, when you're trying to make everyday decisions, if it's not going to work in the narcissist's favour, they're going to look to sabotage these for you. With a partner, the very person that they claim to fall in love with, the way you wore your hair, the way you dress, the narcissist is then suddenly going to start criticising and demeaning and belittling. They can do this in obvious ways. They, who are you trying to impress in that? Who are you going out to meet so you feel uncomfortable? Or they can do it in subtle ways of, you're really wearing that. Mm, I don't think that's quite right for you. Friends do this. Partners do this. Parents do this. Narcissistic people. Now, you can go to a friend and say, hey, what do you think of this? And they'll go, hmm, don't really think that suits you. And it can hurt. They're giving you that honest feedback. You ask them a question. You can have a parent that cares about you, that's seen it all before or lived it themselves, that can see you doing something and just be like, hang on a minute, this is going to cause you problems. Don't think you should be doing that. And as hard as it is, sometimes parents do have to step back and let children slip up and learn from their own mistakes because you cannot make people see what they don't want to hear. So as people can do this on a genuine basis, when a narcissistic person says and does these things, you can think they have your best interest at heart. When what you notice is they change who you are as a person to suit who they are as a person. And you can no longer be yourself around them. And whenever you go and ask them about this, they just claim that they're only trying to help. Yes, we can all give that unsolicited advice. We can all receive that unsolicited advice. A narcissist is going to do it continually to change who you are as a person to benefit who they are as a person. And to stop you doing anything that could potentially outshine them because that criticises them. They need to be superior. They need to be bigger. They need to be better. They need to know more and do more than you. They will just say, I'm not quite sure that's for you. They put obstacles in the way too. Narcissistic parents, even if they can afford to financially support you, will not financially support you. And they will try to sabotage you narcissistic partners if you've got children they'll sabotage the childcare. they'll do all they can to stop you from reaching your true potential yet they'll claim that it's because they care about you they're just trying to protect you they want to spend time with you they don't think it's for you they think you can do much better but they'll not help you and anything anything that they do wrong it's never their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. They're always looking to shift the blame. So they'll just turn around and claim, look at what you made me do. If only you hadn't have done this, then I wouldn't have done that. Which gets you taking responsibility for things you're not responsible for and changing who you are as a person, meaning they don't have to change who they are as a person. And this normalises their behaviour. 
when you're in the situation, you often don't actually see it as abnormal. It's usually not until you're out of the situation that you start explaining it to somebody else and you can see the look on the face, the shock, the surprise, the tone in their voice or them just saying that's not normal. You can think, is it not? <laughs> Especially if you grew up in that kind of environment. Narcissistic people say many things to normalise their behaviour. With a genuine person, you can have that open, honest communication with them. Yes, some people might be offended to begin with. But as they care about you, they're going to look to try and find that compromise, that mutual ground with you. With a narcissistic person, try and approach them about their behaviour and watch how they make it all about you being the one who's causing all the issues because they're not going to take responsibility for who they are. They're going to blame you for everything. They're going to claim that you didn't achieve something because you didn't put the effort in. That you're the one that no longer sees your friends and family because you're the one that's anxious and depressed. Not that they've caused that anxiety and depression within you. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments for people reading through. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support of the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour. To give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. I do also have a couple of books out on Amazon, 15 Rules to Deal with Narcissistic People if you're unable to go no contact, and a Narcissist Handbook, which is the ultimate guide to understanding narcissistic and emotional abuse. And I shall link those into the description also if you'd like to go and check. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.